Hey guys, it's Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Today we're going to begin our look at Shoot to Thrill by ACDC. So this one's got a lot of dual guitar riffs in it, a couple guitar solos, an interlude section, or whatever. So I'm going to break this up into two videos. We're going to learn all the way up through the first guitar solo in this one, and then we're going to check out that breakdown section and the outro guitar, lesson, uh, guitar solo in the second lesson. All right, so let's start here with the intro to the song. We're in standard tuning here, so uh, uh, no big surprises. Let's start with this. All right, so that's Angus's part that starts the song. So that's an A power chord. Open A string, second fret on the D and the G. So we have this. Then you're going to pick the... D string and the G, uh, A string together, and you're going to add the third fret there on the A string. So it's third fret on the A, second on the D together. Then fourth fret on the A, back to the A power chord. So we have this. And then do it again. All right, that's when Malcolm comes in with the. Uh, the main riff, I would say, of the this intro section and the verse. The the way they play it in the intro section is just slightly different than he plays it in the verse, but it's uh, it's definitely the most important riff of the song. So it sounds like this. All right, so that's how it sounds when he first comes in with it. Now it's based around uh, just a couple chords really, this G power chord. Now it's a G power chord because there's no third in it, no B, because they take the A string and they mute it. So that's not being heard and we just had the open D, open G, and the third fret on the B and the high E together. So let's just get these chords down. That's the that chord and then the D power chord. Uh, which basically means it's a D major chord, but you don't have the top note on it. And they have the A in the bass of that D as well. Most of the time when you hear ACDC, a lot of times, always got the A string ringing underneath the D chord. Just thickens up the sound. So we have... So those are the two chords. You can see that you don't have to move your third finger at all. Alright, now for the rhythm. It's very uh, strict rhythm. Just straight eighth notes, but you're accenting. Now after we hit the first one, I'm doing a couple of downstrokes on the muted low E string. All right, so I just lift up the pressure of that second finger to create the mute. Then we go to the D chord. You hit those four middle strings, and you have the muted string is now the open A after it, so we have this. One more time. All right. So from there, at the end of it, if you've done that twice, it does this. We have a uh, we have. So that just comes from the D chord. Reach over with your pinky and grab the fourth fret on the A string, and end it with the A power chord twice. So we have this all together. So that is also the verse riff, um, but the only difference is at the end, instead of hitting that A power chord twice, you hit it once and let it ring. So it sounds like this. So 
So that's how it sounds as soon as the vocals come in. So when the vocals come in, that last A is just hit once. From there we go to the pre-chorus, sounds like this. Alright, now that's how Angus plays it live. Um, Malcolm probably does a different fingering for those chords, I can show you probably how they'll both do them together. So uh, the way Angus plays it, it's just a C power chord here off the third fret off the A string. The so third fret on the A and then fifth fret on the D and the G. Now from here you can you play it with here, whatever way you like to play your bar, your power chords. Into that G power chord and then back to the C power chord. So this. Do that again. Then we go to a D major chord to an A power chord, back to the uh, D major. Now, when you get that D major, once again, the A's in the bass. All right, from there, it goes up to the old Hendrix chord here. All right, so what's going on there? We have this, this is the seventh fret on the A string. Sixth on the D, seven on the G, eight on the B. All right, so you have those, and you hit the low E, and then hit the chord twice, or this. So it keeps going back and hitting that low E every two hits. All right, so they, they both do that together. Now, Malcolm might just play straight, like, standard power chord shapes along with Angus there, so he'd, he could possibly do the the power chord, the same starting power chord, then move it over to the sixth string. Do that a couple times. And then do the same thing in the fifth fret. And then... All right, so you can do, if there's two guitar players, you can thicken it up by both playing kind of different versions of the same chords. All right, and then we have the chorus. Sounds like this. Alright, so what we're going to be doing here is just the A, really A power chord mostly, to the G power chord, to the D major chord. Now, you hit the major third in there, they do that as well. So Remember the D chord, open A under it. Repeat those chords. Now, for this first chorus, you just go through those three chords twice. And then it goes kind of back to the intro riff, except you hit the A power chord three times. And then, and then you do that same thing that we did at the beginning. And that takes you back around to the, the verse again. So you go back through uh, the same um, verse, pre-chorus, and chorus again. Um, and then we get to the solo section, um, the first solo. I'm going to start it when they start kind of jamming out, what we do probably call the interlude section. Sounds like this. All right, and that takes us back to the chorus. So um, we've got some fun stuff there. So we start with that Hendrix E chord again. The low E string. 
comes back and hits that kind of pauses on the low E. It kind of routinely keeps going back and doing that. So if you know the song, you probably know the rhythm sounds like. It's, it's better to just kind of hear it and mimic it. All right, from there we have the uh, the solo wing start. Sounds like this, the first phrase. All right, he just kind of repeats that. So we have this seven on the G, eight on the B, to the open D string. Then you're just gonna move the pinky back to the seventh fret, and back to the open D. So we have this. From there. That's kind of a, you hit the two sevens together, slight bend, then the two fives on the B and the G. Seventh fret on the A, I'm sorry, the D string, it's the A note. And the open A string. So all together. Tricky. And then we go up here to this first phrase. All right, pretty simple stuff uh, for Angus Young at least. So we're gonna have a bend at the 15th fret on the uh, B string. As you do that whole step bend, grab the 15th fret on the high E. Do it three times there. And then, then that's just releasing the bend, pull off to 13, to 14 on the G, back to 13. And then do the three bends with the, adding the 15th fret on the high E string three more times. So that's all together. All right, then it slides down and then does pretty much the same lick now at the 17th fret. Just does it, you know, after that three times, th group of three. Then he ends it with this. So that's the 12th fret on the G and the B together. And the second time you hit each one, just slightly bend it towards the floor. Just kind of pull it down. So we have, and then grab the 14 on the D. So we have this. down in the course. So this course, after the solo, plays those chords uh, normally through three times. And then the fourth time, you're just gonna hit each one at once. From there we get to the breakdown section and that's pretty involved and also the outro guitar solo. So we're going to take, care of look, take a look at those two um, in the next video. I'll see you then.